All right, you guys ready tonight? Come on, I love that you're already standing. If you're not, go ahead and join us tonight. Come on. We are going to celebrate. We are going to rejoice. We're going to ascend. And later tonight, we're going to be sent out. Come on, God has done so much in our lives. And it's time to begin by making a joyful noise in Jesus' name. Let's lift it up. Jesus! 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 Come on. How many people came out of the waters of Williams Creek knowing that your life is forever changed? Well, tonight we're going to celebrate what God did in those waters. Let's give the Lord one more shout tonight. Stepped into the river deep as I feel you move through me. It is healing. You make wrong things right. Yes. And your spirit opens my eyes and my heart becomes alive. It's your love that's bringing me the life. I stepped in. Oh, I stepped in. To the river deep as I feel you move through me, it is healing. You make wrong things right. Oh, Lord. And your spirit opens my eyes and my heart. It comes alive at your love. It's bringing me to life. Oh, there's joy in your waters. Let your river rush in over my soul. I'm free, I'm cleansed, I'm made whole. I've been made new. There is joy. There's joy in your waters. Let your river rush in over my soul. I'm free, I'm cleansed, I'm made whole. I've been made new. Yes. And I hear you call my name as your kindness. You are giving beautiful ashes. Yes, he is. And your spirit opens my eyes and my heart. It comes alive at your love. It's bringing me to life. There's joy in your waters. Let your river rushing over my soul. I'm free. I'm blessed. I'm made whole. Creek. So I know that there's some more joy in you right now that needs to just explode in this room tonight. 
you're going to be able to worship with no chains on you. It's all washed away. It's all gone. It's down Williams Creek, never to be remembered again. I want to see this room act like people who have been utterly set free and filled with the joy of the Lord. I don't care where you start, even if you start all over, just sing the whole thing again. I love this song. Let's do it again. Come on, guys. Let's go. Point I hear you. Chosen, come on. And I hear you. Call my name as your kindness illuminates you with giving. Come on. Beauty for ashes. Come on. In your spirit.
ever deep as I feel you move through me, it is you. You make wrong things right. I love this song, go. And your spirit opens my eyes and my heart comes alive with your love. It's bringing me to life. Can she sing it one more time, go? Oh, I stepped into the river deep as I feel you. Move through me, it is healing. You make wrong things right. Yes. And your spirit opens my eyes and my heart comes alive. It's your life. It's bringing me to life. Hey. There's joy in your waters. Let your river rushing over my soul. I'm free, I'm left.
think we're going to go just a little step further and just to be really undignified. Let's just do it.
this is so significant tonight that just that whole thing of I'm going to give him my best how can we ever offer him less than our best how 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 do you even do that in light of what he has done I mean from now through eternity it's the best come on it's the best song you've got it's the best clap it's the best service it's the best love it's always your best so that means when you go to church tomorrow, when you go to the church Wednesday night, when you go to church for the rest of your life, you don't come in with a half-hearted anything. You don't judge your worship by how other people want to worship and how they prefer to worship. You let them worship like they want to worship. You give him the worship you believe he deserves for whatever he's done for you. You give him your best. It doesn't even have to always be in church. You can go outside. Give him what, every time you worship him, make it your best. Sometimes it's a shout. Sometimes it's a dance. And I'll be honest with you. There have been some times my best was to be able to look up at him and just whisper, I still love you. I still worship you. I don't understand anything else but I love you and I worship you. It's, it's what is your best is determined by what is in your heart. Sometimes that's the best you have. But that's what he always deserves to have. Amen? Let tonight be that night that everything we do, we give him our best. Here's some of the reasons we can do that. Brian, tell him some of the reasons we can give him our best tonight, tell them. 
be good. Let's call them up. Let's, uh, Brooke Tipton, she's uh, one of our Ramp family here. Come on up. Chrissy from Mississippi. Mr. Jacob from Kentucky. And let's just stay right there right now, and we'll go from there. Brooke, you up? Come on, Brooke. So Chrissy from Mississippi and Mr. Jacob from Kentucky, if you guys can come on up. Brooke is a uh, family here. Her family has moved here to be a part of RSM. Uh, both her dad and brother uh, have done the Ramp School of Ministry. They're part of our Ramp Church. And are you coming to RSM as well, right? That's right, this year. So that's awesome. Well, tell them what Jesus did at the baptismal today. Is that right? Uh, well, so if you know me up here, you know I'm not wearing my glasses. And the Lord completely healed my vision. And I don't need my glasses anymore to see. Come on. Come on, give God praise. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, I want, I want to test this out. How many, let me ask this. How many experienced a physical healing this weekend? Wave at us. Let's see those hands. Wow, come on. Let's give God praise for all those hands right now. Come on. Come on. I, I just kept hearing that in my spirit at the baptismal, that he healed them all. Come on, we're going to believe that. Come on, Brooke. So what could you not, what could you not see, like, with your eye problem? Um, I couldn't see really far away, and, like, I couldn't see it all close up. Like, I always had to have my glasses while I was at work, or I was reading my Bible, or I was on my phone. Like, if, it, like, if my phone screen was, like, right here, I couldn't see anything. So let's test it. So if you, can you see that screen well? But they put a scripture up before. Could you read it, or was it blurry? It was really blurry. Just put a scripture up. What random scripture? I'm going to get my phone out. She's going to read some text here. So hold the phone like you would uh, normally hold it. Let's see if I can get it pulled up here. All right. I'll read my text to my wife. <laughs> what does that say right there? I'm not setting my wife up to be romantic like, like this is a moment. All right, hold the phone like you would hold it. Do what you couldn't do before. Uh, McDonald's, no, <laughs> no on pizza again. Are you here in the car? We're starting. What time is the next service? 2 or 2.30? She <laughs> she's ready for interviews. interviews. I told her we would be there be in 10 minutes or so. Come on, somebody. All right, let's put that scripture up. All right, read that scripture. Matthew 6, 6. But, but you, when you pray, go into your room. And when you have shut, shut your door, pray for your father who is in a physical place. Somebody give God praise. Brooke, come here. Are you grateful Jesus healed you? Yes. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Chrissy. Hi. Um, I'm Chrissy. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> I want to start off with, uh, I'm, my aunt, she actually made, didn't make me calm, but you know, she wanted me, <laughs> she wanted me to see a drama from her church, and I wasn't really kind of up for that, but then, uh, you know, the ramp came along, and she asked me if I wanted to go, and I said, sure, so I had gotten saved at her church. Uh, um... Before, <laughs> before we used to go to church, me and my family, and because of other reasons, we left the church and we uh, we fell back from God. And my parents don't really know Jesus anymore. <laughs> And I came here to get what I needed from God so I could take it back to my mama and my daddy. <laughs> um, um, it took a lot out of me. Uh, I used to battle with homosexuality. And... Uh, it actually led into a relationship with some girl from another state. But when I came here, I, it was yesterday, and 
And when they were praying, when people were falling out, I fell out. And you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know when you think God's done, guess what? He's not. He's not. And when I fell out the second time, I felt free. <laughs> Get what she just said? I fell free. Come on, somebody. I fell free. Free, 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 freedom. Come on, shout freedom. Powerful, powerful. Come on, my brother. Yes. I'm Jacob. Where are my Kentucky people at? All right. Where are my Methodists at? All right. I think it's just you and Sam. I think that's it. I think that's all. Yeah. That was more than I thought. So, all right. So, I grew up a Methodist. My dad's a Methodist pastor. I'm actually a Methodist pastor in Kentucky, and I've been in ministry. I walked away from ministry after four years of ministering in my own strength, and I was left bitter, burned out, and ready to walk away from God, ready to walk away from His promise over my life, but God wasn't finished with me. I came, I came here not knowing exactly what to expect. This isn't a Methodist conference. I'll go ahead and tell you all that now. About as charismatic as a Methodist conference get. If you can get them clapping on one and three, you're doing all right. Two and four, you're pushing it. All right, so I, was, I came here bound by the spirit of religion. God gave me a dream three weeks ago, and in that dream, I was, I was being held back from uh, the gift of speaking in tongues, and God told me that you are bound by the spirit of religion, and when you get rid of that, when that leaves you, then you are free. The first service I came here, and they played, I will be undignified. And I was like, y'all are crazy. <laughs> and so I just kind of, you know, I clapped on the one and three and I did my thing. But then I met the Holy Ghost. I met the Holy Ghost and I have not been the same. I met the Holy Ghost and I was at this altar speaking in tongues. You ain't heard a Methodist speak in tongues, have you? Oh, Roma, no, 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 my wife didn't grow up a Methodist, but she's Methodist by proxy. She fell out. She started speaking in tongues. Not only did that happen, but my wife who has struggled with barrenness, my wife who has struggled with infertility, my wife who has struggled for the past three years of our marriage, we've, we've wanted kids. The last church that I served before I left ministry, it was, it was a, a toxic environment. My wife, uh, we didn't know that she could get pregnant, but she, she, she got pregnant and she had a miscarriage. And at that point, that was the breaking point. That's why we left. And we've struggled ever since. And, and we've struggled uh, just with our, our walks with God, our, our marriage. But God is a God who restores. 
God is a God who makes new that which has been broken. My God gave, gave my wife Taylor a word last night and said that not only are we coming back to the ramp, but when we come back to the ramp, my wife won't be able to see her feet because she's going to be pregnant. Somebody shout. Shout. Come on, stretch your hands this way. Where's that wife at? I want his wife to join him. Come on. Y'all start praying in tongues. Healing. I think there was a word given at the baptismal waters. This morning, word of knowledge. Stretch your hands this way. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I feel the anointing. Come on, I feel the anointing. The Bible says in Acts 2.17 that he's going to pour out his spirit on all flesh. Not Pentecostals, not Charismatics. The Methodists are going to get it. The Presbyterians, the Baptists. Come on, he's pouring out the Holy Ghost. Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Give them that child. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Healed in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout if you believe it. Shout if you believe it. We've seen it happen over ramp. How many times have we seen it happen? How many times, Emma? How many times? Uh, Sonia. I mean, we can just keep naming them. Over and over and over, God has done it. Now, what is your first name? Taylor, congratulations. We're so excited about the baby. Come on. So excited. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody look at somebody you're standing next to say, did you hear about Taylor being pregnant? Did you, did you hear about Taylor? Did you hear about Taylor being pregnant? Come on. Isn't that exciting? Oh. Come on, give God one more praise. Wow. Well, y'all have just blessed our socks off. Thank you. And thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. Every thank you, baby. But most of all, thank you, Jesus. Give him one more cup of praise. Shout miracles. We're seeing miracles tonight. Everything that was just described was a miracle. We're going to see one more miracle tonight. And I want you to agree with me for this, and I believe it's going to happen tonight. Supernatural, a God miracle. I told you last night, we purchased that hotel by faith. This, well, I'm supposed to sign the papers Monday, I believe it is. This early part of this week. Right down here, called Holiday Hotel. Now, I don't need to try to explain to y'all what the ramp is about, do I? Y'all, you're here, you're in it, this is it. This is the way it's been for 20 years. This is, well, I'm not going to say it's the way it's going to be till Jesus comes. This is the least it will be till Jesus comes because it's going to be from glory to glory as His glory increases and the presence of God is manifested. Shout more. Shout there's more coming. That's right. Oh, I felt that when you said that to me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Say it again. There's more coming. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I believe that. You know, you being in this environment, do you believe that this is the answer for your generation? The presence of God. Do you believe the presence of God, an encounter with God, is the only answer for this generation? It is. There is no other answer for your friends in your high schools, your universities, your cities, for your families. An encounter with the living God is the only hope for the world. And so tonight that makes us realize the weightiness of our responsibility. We purchased this hotel by faith this week because we've got to have the beds for students. 
Not only are they coming into this place to be awakened, that's why we're going to have to have that shopping center renovated as fast as possible. But right now, these kids that are coming and being awakened are coming back to be equipped in the Word. That's what the Ramp School of Ministry is all about. It's about equipping them in the Word. It's about establishing their faith. And it is about awakening the gifts that God has placed within them to be stirred up. They are trained in those gifts. They are sent out with boldness and confidence to accomplish the will of God for their life. Now, by August, we have to have that thing ready, painted, new beds, renovated, and ready to go. Because we're going to fill it up. We're going to fill it up with kids training for ministry. Kids being trained in the Word of God. My husband, we're, we're buying the hotel for $460,000. How'd you do that? By faith. That's a pretty good deal too, by the way. A hotel. That in the last six months has new carpet, new air conditioning, and a new roof. How are you going to pay for that? God's going to speak to people he's blessed. And they're going to say yes. And we're going to see a miracle. Now, again, we're believing for the full 460. But tonight, my husband told me this morning before I left for the first service. We have to have $175,000 in the next three weeks for the hotel. That's, that's the way. But I, I'm believing God for the full 460. I told Rick, I said, let's believe for the full 460. But I'm believing tonight that the one. Now, I will, I will put my faith in If there's someone here that says, Miss Karen, I can't think of a better way to invest the money God has already given me than to sow the full 460 and let me buy that hotel to put young people in to train them for ministry till Jesus comes. Now, what about, I wish, I, I, would that not be the most wonderful thing to be able to do? To buy a hotel to put young people in to train them for ministry until Jesus comes. If you are here and you're that person, please come up and get Samuel Bentley. Tell Samuel, wave your hand. This is my son-in-law. He's over the Ram School of Ministry. And come and tell him, I am that man or I am that woman. And until we hear from you, I want us to believe. The rest of us in this room, let's knock off that 175. I know that's, I know that's possible. So how is it possible? Let's do what we said a while ago. Everybody do something and everybody do their best. All right? Do your best. Everybody giving. And I want it to just be a miracle offering tonight. I mean a miracle offering in Jesus' name. Now, y'all ready to pray? Kids, how many of you kids will believe with me for that? How many of you adults and grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads and youth pastors will agree with me for this? How many? I want to see hands. Hands matter because the agreement matters. I want to see the people in this room that will agree. Now, now, look at that. Just look at that. Jesus said, if just two agree. Jesus said, if just me and her agree. Jesus said, if just me and her would agree, it'd be enough that we could ask whatever we wanted and we could receive it according to the will of our Father. Thank you, sweetheart. But if all of us are agreeing, agreeing together, we're going to see a mountain move tonight. We're going to see a need met. So God knows who exactly, well, who to speak to and what you can give. So in Jesus' name, kids, I want to tell you something. You need to take this serious because you need to learn how to live utterly dependent upon God. You need to take this moment serious because there's someday when you're 58 and you're looking at some spiritual sons and daughters and you're looking at them going, guys, we need a building and we're going to believe God for $175,000. And then you're going to go, but I remember one night I was standing in a room years ago and I was with this old lady named Karen Wheaton. No, no, I'm no, I'm old. I was with this lady named Karen Wheaton and she needed $175,000. And I remember what we did. We just all gave our best and we believed God and we saw a miracle and we're going to see it again now. Come on, this is going to be faith for you. And listen, not only is it faith for you, honey, not only is it faith for you, watch, it is seed into your future. 
Not only is it for you to learn, it's for you to sew into. And you beautiful girl with that orange t-shirt and the blonde hair smiling at me. There is something on your life. What is your name? Emily? Emily, in the name of Jesus. I see a light over your head. And Lift your hands in the air, Emily. Father, I thank you that this young lady called of God right here, right now, chosen, separated unto God. Fresh anointing in her, upon her, and through her. Set apart for your work. Consecrated to God. A spiritual mother of many. Somebody put your hands on her feet. Lord, I thank you that these feet will carry the gospel of this good news. In the name of Jesus. How beautiful are the mountains. On the mountains are the feet of this girl, Emily, that will carry this good news. I call forth the boldness of God out of her mouth in Jesus' name. Give God praise for what's going to come through, Emily. How many of you are ready to sow into what God has called you to do? I mean it. I mean it. I'm talking to you kids. I, I mean, whatever is your best, you give what you can give. Everybody gives something. Get my purse chosen. Get your stuff. We're going to all give. This is a mountain push. We're pushing away a mountain right now. Come on. I want, here's what I'm asking for tonight. I'm asking for faith. Say faith. Say, I believe. I believe. Faith. Faith in this room. And an offering. A seed. In the name of Jesus. And when you plant your seed, have faith as you sow it. That it's going to meet the need of this ministry. And it's going into your future. In Jesus' name. Now, Father, our eyes are upon you. It's your ministry. And it will be your hotel to put young people in. To become dorms. Housing. For young men and women to be equipped in the purpose you have them for on the earth. My eyes are on you. I lift up my eyes into the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from you, Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. Great is your faithfulness. My trust is in you tonight, in Jesus' name. I'm asking you, Father, to speak to people what you would be pleased with for them to give. And I'm asking you to bless them back many times. And as they plant this seed into their future and into the purpose that you have for them in the days to come, May it come back a hundredfold in Jesus' name. We say amen. amen. Place your, prepare your offering. And uh, what I want to ask you to do, you're about to stand for a while, so it's okay. Will you say, Miss Karen, I want this offering to be, this need to be met so much, I don't care a bit, to sit down and prepare my offering. So let's do that right now. Make your checks payable to the ramp. Information of how to give is on the screen. Thank you. If you need an envelope for cash or credit card giving, raise your hand. <clears throat> now then, shh. Everybody doing something. If you need an envelope for cash or credit card giving, you don't have to have an envelope if you don't want a tax receipt. But if you do want a tax receipt or you're giving by credit card, you will need an envelope. If you'd like to text and give, that information is right there. If you're watching online tonight, you want to be a part of this. There's a place you can give. Every gift is so appreciated. There's parents that are watching tonight. Your child is in this room. And they've been changed. And I can't think of anything more rewarding than to sow into a place that God has used to change their life and their destiny. You're sowing not only into ministry to change others, but you're sowing into the future to reap in your sons and daughters. And I bless you for giving, and I agree with you. In Jesus' name, your prodigal that you are believing for is coming home. 
felt to tell somebody watching that right now that prodigal you are believing for is coming home. Don't give up. Don't stop praying in Jesus' name. Amen. You ready to give? Are you ready? Is your offerings ready? If you need more time, just say, I need more time. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the wind of your Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Put that picture of that hotel up if you've got it here, do you? He took a picture this morning of just some of the uh, doors. Let's put it on the screen since we're believing God for this tonight. So there you go. That's part of it. It's actually bigger than that. It's actually, yeah, it's actually bigger than that. It comes on out. We're going to paint it. It's going to be beautiful. And um, it's got, it's, it's just, you it's got a, a full apartment in it for our, our directors that will stay there at that particular dorm. And there's rooms all on the back side, too, that you can't see. There's rooms on the back. And there's a big old lot in the back and parking and a huge two rooms upstairs and down that are gigantic. So it's just so much. I'm just leaving it there as we're, as we're pushing this mountain aside. And we're going to see God do a miracle. Are you ready now? Hold your offering up. In Jesus' name. Hold your offering up. Yes, yeah, some people I see are holding cell phones up. That's a good thing, too, because we declare this offering blessed from whatever way you have planted it. I see parents and, and, and youth pastors with your offerings. I can't thank you enough. In the name of Jesus, I can't thank you enough. Go ahead and let's receive this offering and find out what it is tonight. And we're going to rejoice and see God do a miracle. I told Rick this morning when he, before I left, he said, Karen, we're going to have to have 175000 in three weeks. And I said, Rick, God is going to do it. I don't know how. Years ago, you kids wouldn't remember this, but maybe a mom and dad would. I used to sing a song that said, you may not know how. You may not know when. Come on, y'all. But he'll do it again. Yes, he will. I know he will. I've seen him do it. I've seen him do it. And he's going to do it again in Jesus' name. He's going to do it again because we've seen it happen over and over and over because he's faithful. Let that give you faith that he's going to meet your need too in Jesus' name. Anybody else with an offering that we did not get, hold it up if we missed you. Okay, there's some offerings right here. And again, all right. Anyone else? Did we miss anyone? Wave us down. Be patient with us and wave. Anyone else? Okay, there's hands back here. Thank you so much. All right. We are about to hit water that we won't be able to come back from. And so because of that, let me tell you, we're so honored that you have been here at the ramp. And uh, we love you. We are with you. We are standing with you. We want you to come back all the time. Let this be your other home. Will you do that? And uh, it's, I have some special friends that came all the way from Dallas. And uh, just already just feel like they're part of our family. And we love you, all three of you girls. We love you dearly. Sweet joy. And uh, stay in touch with us. Come to RSM and just live here a couple of years with us, why don't you? But more than anything, you know, July will be here. August will be here. September, December, it's just so much fun. Come and run with us. Are you ready to go on? Let's get in this river tonight. And we're not going to come back. Are you ready to jump in? Come on. Let's dive in. Let's throw the inner tubes aside and let's jump in the water. Get up on your feet. Eddie James, my dear friend, let's go. Swim in this water. Take it away, my friend. Let's go.
exclusive, O oh God. Jesus. Our Sabbath, our rest. Jesus. The Word made flesh. Jesus. the priest and king. Jesus. Unto you we sing. Jesus. And as well at the fullness Jesus. of his Godhead bodily. Jesus. He is the image Jesus. of the invisible God. Jesus. Our Sabbath, our rest. Jesus. The Word made flesh. Jesus. the priest and king. Jesus. Unto you we sing. Jesus. Teacher, rabbi, with authority to speak parables that enlighten our eyes. Jesus, taught the pearl of great price. Marriage feast must have seemed so accurate and precise. Jesus, taught the seed and the sower, the field within the treasure, bring our laborers. Jesus, the lion and the lamb, Jesus, the great I am. Jesus, said, bless the name who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus, said to the world, you're a light, shining in the darkness, a city on a hill. Jesus, taught us how to pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Jesus, the light and the lamp. Be and pray, Jesus. he reigns forever. Jesus. There will never be another. Jesus. Jesus. The way to their life. Jesus, miracle worker to the winds and the waves. He said, Peace be still. Jesus, like blind Bartimaeus, the deaf, the lame. The lepers he killed Jesus, the daughter of Jairus, the widow son and Lazarus, he raised from the dead. He's the light of the lamp, he's the bright I am. From the dead he's raised, exalted and praised. He raised from the dead. There will never be another. Jesus, you are my Messiah, the way to With a kiss, sentence to die by Peter three times tonight. Jesus, beating at the women folks, hangs on a cross. The disciples scattered when he needed them the most. Jesus declares it is finished into your head. I commend my spirit. Jesus, the sins into hell confronts.
something happens when you call that name. Things shift when you call that name. Demons tremble when you call that name. Can I get about 300 young people to open up their mouth loud and shout, Jesus! The Bible declares that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So we have mighty weapons, the name of Jesus, the word of God, mighty weapons. But I want you to say this because this is also a weapon that we have. I want you to make this declaration. When I move my body, uh -huh. when I move my feet, when I open my mouth, then the darkness flees. How many of you know that your praise is a weapon against the enemy? Is there anybody know that when you clap, when you shout, when you move, when you worship, your praise is a weapon? Come on, give God a praise. Come on, continue to roar in the place. Put those heads together. Hey! Hey! Oh God, we bless you today. Hey! Yeah. Here we go. Bless the Lord, oh my one. Bless the Lord, the heavenly host. Y'all sound real good. Bless the Lord, all you his angels. And let all the earth sing forth his praise. I think y'all got it. Could y'all help us? Bless the Lord. Everybody say almighty ones. Almighty ones. Y'all sound really good. Bless the Lord. But I will bless the Lord. All you say, let all the earth, yeah. Here we go, can we rock it out? Hey, hey. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Lift it up, say. The Lord is good and he's worthy of it. the Lord, forever I will bless the Lord, for you is angel, oh, on the earth, yeah. hey, come on, come on and say, come on, come on and bless him, come on and praise his name, come on, come on and bless him, he's so good and he's worthy, come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Can we lift it up all of the beauty safe? Come on, come on and praise the world. Let's go. 
you to understand what you're doing when you're dancing. I want you to understand what you're doing when you're turning. Something that we do at EJM, when we sing the song Joy, we turn because what that means is I'm turning. He's turning my sorrow into joy. He's turning my mourning into joy. I want you to understand when you jump and when you dance, you're exercising your freedom in the Lord. It's an expression of freedom. It's an expression of joy. So what I want y'all to do when we say my dance is a weapon, I want you to just take out of your mind what somebody else might think about you. Take out of your mind your own limits that you put on yourself and just begin to dance in the joy and the peace of the Lord that the Lord Jesus has died for you to have. He's died for all of us to have the freedom of the Lord to dance and to... I want somebody to get it in the place. So when we count this back in, I want everybody to dance like no one's watching. I don't want you to understand that you are serving notice to the enemy, that he can't hold you. It's a prophetic demonstration that this is what's happening. Whatever I loose in the earth shall be loosed in heaven. And whatever I bind in the earth shall be bound in heaven. We bind sickness. We bind distractions. We bind diversion. We bind perversion. We bind anxiety, we bind fear, and we lose joy. We lose joy. We lose joy. We lose joy. Yeah. Then my dance is a weapon. 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 Freedom, 
with the voice of freedom, with the voice of joy. Hey, God. Oh, we roar. Break the ceiling off with your shout. Break the ceiling off with your voice. Break the ceiling off with your praise. We want to reach heaven. We want to reach you, God. We want to reach you with our praise. Come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Come on. One. Break through in my praise, break through in my lips, oh, my we're 
hands to the Lord. If I told him, hold on, hold on. Put them down because I'm going to put you up. They're going to go up in just a second. Before you put them up. I want Jacob. Come here for a second. And I want Sam to come. Come here, Sam and Jacob. Come on. Run, run, run real quick. Stand on this side. You stand on this side. Say everybody say, hey, Jacob. Hey, yeah. Jacob, about two and a half, almost three weeks now, Jacob was, three weeks ago Monday, he was homeless, addicted to heroin, and alone. One of my spiritual sons contacted me about the situation, said, do you have room? Because we have a recovery program for young people. I said, he came on Monday night. We had chapel on Tuesday. We prayed for him on Tuesday. No withdrawals on Wednesday. Oh. Jacob is almost, almost three months clean from heroin. 
Come on. No, no. Three weeks. Uh, three weeks. Almost three weeks clean. Three weeks clean. Come on. Praise God for that. I thought about him when my Methodist brother was sharing because he knows nothing about this charismatic Pentecost. No history. But the only history of church he has is Lutheran. Now he's up here getting prayed to be filled with the Holy Ghost and jumping up and talking in tongues and going after God. Come on. Sam, on the other hand, grew up in church, but parents and all fell out of church and got addicted to drugs. He was addicted to, well, I guess everything. Xanax, heroin, cocaine, carrot, cocaine, cocaine, right? Pain pills, Xanax, and yeah, all that. For four years, and six months ago, God met him at a service we were doing. Now, Sam is 19 as well, and has been six months clean. Come on. And not just clean, but in the word every day, praying every day, seeking God every day, going after God every day. Because the only one, it's, it's a difference between, between being sober and being delivered. It's a difference. And we praise God for sobriety, but we want to be delivered. Amen. There's a worship song that Sam does that really touches my heart. It's what God did in him. And while we're worshiping, I just have a sense that there might be a couple of others in this room that need to look at these testimonies of these young men and say, if God can deliver them, God can deliver me too. There just might be somebody, in fact, in my heart, I really believe there's still somebody else that need to say yes to God. They need to know that Jesus is able to deliver you. He's able to set you free. And, and, and I look at these two young men and I say, God, I thank you because they're miracles. They should be dead today. But they're standing here miracles in Jesus' name. Sam, I just want you to sing. You know the song I'm talking about. I want you to begin to sing that over the people in this room. And if this, as he sings this song, if you need to respond, in fact, we might need to take a few steps back. Just two or three steps. He's going to sing this, and I want you to do what Samuel did, what Jacob did. Jacob answered an altar call coming all the way, actually from Colvin, Alabama to Tennessee, because he was tired of living in the streets and living addicted. He wanted to be free. Some of you, God has brought you all the way to the ramp for this very moment so that you can respond to the love of Jesus. If this is for you, I want you to get out of your, wherever you're standing, wherever you're sitting, and I want you to respond and let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do in your life. Come on. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. 
Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. There's still somebody right now, you've, been man you've managed to sit through this whole conference. And at times you've just been miserable and hated it. And yet deep down inside of you, you knew that God had brought you here. You're loved. You are loved. He wants you. He's pulling your heart. And we're here with you. Would you step out right now? This is the moment to just give in and say, I'm tired of this life. I'm tired of it. I want Jesus. I want the real thing. Come on. You say, well, it's taken me till now, but I know this is real and this is what I want. Come on, from the very back. Come on, right now, all over this room. Anybody else? Anyone else says, this is it for me. This is where the battle ends and Jesus wins. I want God. I want the real thing. Come on, you've been hurt by people, disappointed by family. There's another one. And here's another one. You've run because you said, I don't want to be a hypocrite. You're not going to be a hypocrite. This is the real thing. Come on, this is the real thing. Chosen, respond immediately. Guys to guys and girls to girls. In the name of Jesus. Come on. Come on. Right now. Anyone else? Is there anyone else? Come on. You're loved. You're loved. We want to pray for you. We want to pray for you. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Don't move. I'm fixing to give it back. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anyone else? Come on, Brian. Come on, Sam. Blue cap. Sam Bentley. Brian. The blue cap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is here. I want everybody in this room to stretch out faith. People are being saved. You may be watching right now. And you want to say yes to Jesus. This is your moment to, right where you are, make an altar where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in a living room, a kitchen, sitting on your bed, driving down the road in your car, or sitting in a bar. You can make an altar where you are. Just say, Jesus, I want you. Forgive me of my sins. I don't want to live this life anymore. I need freedom. Jesus, with your blood, forgive my sins. Cleanse my heart. Break these chains and be the Lord of my life. I love you, God. I want to serve you for the rest of my life. And I want to know the real God. Come on, he's right where you are. Let us know you're there. Let us know that Jesus is speaking to you. Comment, do something. Go on there and say, I've just given my life to Jesus. I've just given my life to Jesus. 
These altars are filling. Would everybody in this room just sing this song one more time with him? Come on, sing it again, sweetheart. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life was born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Now be 
It is no wonder the Bible says. It's no wonder that the Bible says that the angels in heaven rejoice over just one sinner that comes back to God. I know why, because I've got their view tonight. If you could have my view right now, you would know why we're doing what we're doing. Because the view in this altar is just one of their faces. I just said to Eddie James just now, Eddie, look right there, paid in full for 20 years of 40 years of everything. These faces that we're looking at right now, if y'all could see, you know what? There's nothing like watching, watching one of these, these young ones go from darkness to light. It is the greatest miracle that you will ever see is the heart transformed. That's the greatest miracle of all. And right now, this room is filled with miracles. Brian, I want you to come. Where are you, son? Wow. What in the world? What do we do with this? This. What do we do with this? I'm speechless. And that takes a lot. Wow. But I know nothing to do except let these continue to pray. They're laid out on the floor. They're all over the place. It's just a big blubbering mess of glory. And I love it when God just changes the plans. It was the most interesting thing. I was sitting over there as Eddie was singing. We were dancing. The place was erupting in praise and dancing all over the room. And I hear the Holy Ghost tell me, there's still one. A few minutes later, Tina comes up and whispers to me over there. And Tina bends down. Tina's a girl on Chosen. Tina comes up and whispers to me literally these words, Miss Karen. There's still one. And the Holy Ghost was, is he not something else? He, as, as much as he loves the party of praise, he still got these on his mind. He did not want to dismiss this conference till we could throw the net one more time. This is the heart of God. It's why the clock is ticking. You want to know why there's a second hand still moving and that Jesus has not yet returned? Because he knew if he could wait till tonight, he would still be saved. If he could wait a little bit longer, she would be delivered. Come on. That's what's happening. That's why we still have this time. Before you leave tonight, Brian, I want him... To just, Brian, just flow, honey. I know everything's just gotten flipped upside down, and this is the way we like it. But Brian, if Brian is going to just charge you, to commission you, I want you to go out as sent ones. I want you to go out as awakened, burning revivalist. And he is going to pray over you. I want all of chosen leadership. I want everybody in a few moments. We're going to step out on this platform. We're going to stretch our hands toward you. You have been either saved or recommitted. You have been sanctified, consecrated. You have been baptized in the Holy Ghost and water. You have been delivered. Your bodies have been healed. I don't know how it could get any better than this, do you? But except now, you are going to be commissioned as sent ones. Back to your cities, back to your churches, back to your schools that you'll be attending this fall and university campuses and RSM and you're going to be sent out to go change your world this has been for you but it's been for everyone that's in your circle of influence Pastor Brian I want you to come and commission them out I want chosen everybody leadership get ready to step out here with us Eddie all of your team with us too come on all of you we're going to send you out of this place in just a few moments in the name of Jesus just so honored to be in this moment with the Holy Spirit just 
Uh, I'll never forget being years ago, I was invited to Alaska. A young man I graduated with, we partied together and I got saved and kind of distanced myself, but he got radically saved and ended up being a missionary in Alaska. Found me here at the ramp and invited me out. I remember reading a book that was on the nightstand in the guest room that they had me in. And it was a book that this man was mightily used in miracles. And he said this statement, he said, I'm happiest in the Lord when I see the sick healed. And I remember reading that and going, you know, I, 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 I enjoy seeing the sick healed, but I don't know if I can say I'm the happiest in the Lord when that happens. So it put a question in my heart. The next night I was busy with meetings at a morning meeting and a evening meeting. And I remember that evening preaching and giving an altar call just for miracles, just to pray with the people of God for breakthroughs. And I'm laying hands on people and I come to this young little girl. I say little girl, 16 years old, named Linda, a local there in Alaska. And I said, what do you want from the Lord? She says, I want to give him my life. And I remember tears being in her eyes. And I remember it just hit me so deep and said, this is when I'm the happiest. To see this. When people give their lives for Jesus. Why did God heal you? Why did God deliver you? Why did God baptize you in the Holy Ghost? Yes, it's because of His love and His mercy, His promises. But there's more to it than that. If this was just about being with Him in heaven, and the greatest thing that could happen to us is we would drop dead after we came to an altar call like this, that it just would be over, then we could spend eternity with Jesus. But that's not the case. We're bound in this body, sent to this earth, and we have a season. We have a dash when you look at those tombstones, you see a birth date, and then you see a death date. But between that is a dash, and that is all you've got. So why does Jesus just not take us out? Because He has done that for you. He has done that for me, so that we can see this. But not just in the four walls of this building, because if that was the case, we need to do conferences every day. We just need to do them all the time and bring them here. And the answer is get to a building and go to a church and have another conference and have another service. And that's the answer. But that's not the case. Because Jesus looked at his disciples and he said, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers. He didn't, pray for, he didn't tell us to pray for them to come in. He prayed that we would go out. So what is this about? Why did you get transformed? Why did God do all of this for you? You've been awakened to now bring awakening. You've been healed to bring healing. You've been delivered. Why? So you can bring deliverance. God wants to use you. Not someday. Not after 10 years of seminary and Bible college and all. No, God wants to use you today. He told us. He gave us the commission. I'm just repeating what Jesus said. What did he say to us? He said in Mark 16, he said, go into all the world. Go into your world. And do what? What do I do when I go? Preach. Tell them your story. Tell them what Jesus did for you today. I was reading about the man in the Gadarenes. This man was possessed by devils, so much so that he's naked, living in a, in, a, in a graveyard, cutting himself, chained by man. And Jesus sets him free with one word, go. He casts the demons out. And then the man says, I want to follow you. He said, no, I got a better idea. Go back to your friends and family and tell them what the Lord has done for you. I want to commission you, go back to your friends and family and tell them what Jesus did for you. Go into all the world, preach the gospel. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But Jesus goes a step farther. He says, I'm not just going to give you a message to tell. I'm not just going to give you a story to share. 
I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you signs. These signs will follow them that believe. You're not leaving tonight with just a story. You're not leaving here tonight with just a message. That is the greatest thing that leads to salvation. But he's going to give you a witness. He's going to back you up. See, I used to tell people before the baptism of the Spirit, I was a good old Baptist boy. I witnessed to people. But then God said, this little Baptist boy, he needs a little something. He needs a little oomph to his life. So he baptized me in the Holy Ghost and said, now you've got power. Not only could I tell them about Jesus, now I could show them Jesus. Now I could pray for the sick and they would recover. Now I can cast out devils. Now there is power and authority in my life. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, there's that power. There's that authority. His name is Holy Spirit. His name is Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, say the name. Jesus. Come on, there's power in the name of Jesus. These signs will follow them that believe in my name. In Jesus' name. Come on, chosen. Come on, leadership. Lift your hands. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus in your belly. The name of Jesus on your lips. Father, we pray tonight. Send them out. Send them with the gospel. Send them with signs, wonders, miracles, gifts of the Holy Ghost. God, word of wisdom, words of knowledge, discernment of spirits, gifts of power, faith, working of miracles, gifts of healing. So souls can be saved. Send them out as awakeners. Send them out as deliverers. Send them out as healers in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just pray even right now. Just raise your hands again. Just receive. Just receive. Holy Spirit, fill them with power. Fill them with fire. Lord, I pray even right now, Lord, that dunamis power. That dunamis power. You feel it in your hands. The miracles. The healing coming out of your hands. Lord, I pray you start giving them vision right now. Vision, Lord Jesus. That they start seeing the people that they're going to touch with healing and miracles and salvation and restoration and the love of Jesus. Lord, touch their eyes, Lord Jesus. Touch their eyes, Lord Jesus. Let them see visions of harvest fields. Let them see visions, Lord Jesus, of their schools being transformed. Give them vision. Give them the vision of Jesus. Give them the vision of Jesus. Give them the vision of Jesus. Holy Lord, Holy Ghost, empower them. Let them know that they are called, that they have a purpose, that they have a destiny, and that they can win so many people with the love of Jesus exuding outside of them. In Jesus' mighty name. I decree and I declare a commissioning out into the deep. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for you to begin to impart in them right now. God, we pray for a download in them like never before to have a hunger for souls, to have a hunger to begin to take the gospel out to the nations, out to their schools, out to their communities. God, I pray, God, this very thing that you're doing even in this room that they take into their homes, God. I pray that their parents might begin to be on fire for what they see in them. God, I pray, God, that their family might begin to be on fire for what they're doing. God, I pray right now for the very fire that they walk in in the name of Jesus I pray that they shall begin to walk into rooms and rooms begin to be lit on fire God God I pray for a fire epidemic to start with them God I pray for them to begin to carry it out God with a fervency God with fear and trembling they shall walk out their salvation God I say in the name of Jesus we decree and we declare that as they begin to walk in they open up their mouths for they will begin to shake rooms shake nations they shall begin to shake communities they shall begin to shake schools 
schools they shall begin to shake in the name of Jesus we decree and we declare that they shall never see a lack in the body of Christ because they shall be the hands and the feet God I say right now I impart responsibility responsibility for what the kingdom has to offer the world for what the kingdom has to offer and snatch people out of the kingdom of darkness in the name of Jesus 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 Fire in their minds, fire in their hearts, fire in their spirit, God, to go out and to get the lost, to go out and heal the sick, to go out, God. We commission them, we commission them, we commission them, we initiate, we activate in this atmosphere. We activate even now. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. God, we put a cry in their belly, a cry that's going to begin to heal, a cry that's going to deliver, a cry that's going to raise up, a cry that's going to save. I agree with you for family revival when you get home. Mama say, daddy say, brothers say, sisters say, prodigals brought home. Family revival. I declare the fire in your youth group only increases. It never goes out. I decree over your youth group, never the same again. I declare revival over your church in the name of Jesus. Come on. Your city belongs to the kingdom of God because you're there. Start naming the name of your city right now in this atmosphere. Come on. Call it out. Call the name of your city. Call it out. God, give me my city. I say Hamilton. Manchester, Chattanooga, give me my city. Tupelo, Memphis, New Orleans, give me my city. Israel, South Africa, India, give me my city. Give me my nation. Oh, come on, believe that. Give me my city. Give me my city. Give me my city. Oh. Jesus name give me my city give us Israel America America come back to God America come back to God in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name right there. Just pray over your city right there in Jesus' name. here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. What I want to do right now in this beautiful atmosphere, many people still all over this floor, I would like to close this conference this way. I would like to ask you to get together as youth groups. Maybe you came with a whole group. Maybe you came with one. Just get together. Each one of you represents a city a family, a nation, a church. Would y'all, we're gonna pull the music in a few moments and we'll pull it way back so you can hear better. And this you can just keep playing right now softly. But this is the way we will close this conference. Is youth pastors, get with your kids. I wanna ask you to come, listen, this is what I wanna ask you to do. As a youth group or as a family, 
make a commitment to each other. When we get home, we're starting a prayer meeting. Here at the ramp, we pray in the weekdays, 8 to 9 in the morning, 8 to 9 at night. Whatever God tells you to do for your schedule. But make a commitment, youth pastors. Maybe you can't set the schedule tonight, but you can make a commitment. When we get home, we're going to figure out our schedule, and we're going to make prayer a priority. When we get home, we're going to submit to the vision that God has given our pastor. And we're going to say, Pastor, we're here to serve the vision God has given you for our church and our city. Before y'all walk out of these doors tonight, say, in this house of awakening, there's going to be revival in our church and in our city. Pray over each other. Youth pastors, lay hands on your kids. And kids, pray over your youth pastor. This is the way this service will close and this conference will end. We love you here at the ramp very, very much. We will not have service in the morning. We will have service here tomorrow night at 6.30 if you would like to join us. No service in the morning, but we will have service tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock, not 6.30, 6 o'clock tomorrow night. 6 o'clock if you want to join us. Good night, everybody. Pray as long as you want. We love you very much. Take your liberty.